Hello everyone, welcome back to City Skylines and welcome back to Corefields. We've got another episode planned for a day, but the first thing I want to talk about is mods. I've now installed quite a few mods to help me out in the running of this place, but they mainly focus on upgrading the quality and the graphics within City Skylines. So we've got a really nice, slightly more realistic looking city here. And I'm really excited to dive in and do some redevelopment. But today, it's all going to be focused on our industry. So at the moment, we've got the farms, we've got the forestry. We don't have any ore or oil because we've not actually unlocked any on the map. But what we're going to try and do is set up some sort of import so we can boost the levels of our oil and uh, metal district. So what that'll do is hopefully get us all of the buildings unlocked as quickly as possible by importing the raw materials into our city. Then we're going to focus on getting all of our unique buildings up and running as quickly as possible so we can have a really nice free-flowing manufacturing industry that is providing a bunch of goods to our city. I found a very interesting spreadsheet on Reddit that's going to help me out here. Uh, the link to that will be in the comments if you want to check it out yourself if it works. So uh, let's jump in and we'll uh, talk a little bit more as we develop and design our new industrial zones. So the first thing we're going to do is actually destroy the Barlow agricultural area. This has been a major source of traffic but uh, for now what I want to do is I just want to move my planed timber warehouse here into this area so that it's behind the tolls. And then we're going to demolish everything within the Barlow Agricultural District. We don't need this anymore. Uh, it's served its purpose to help us level up as much as possible, for now anyway. And we're going to focus all of our attention on boosting the other agricultural area that we have in our original farming district. We're going to get rid of this little route as well. So that all we've got running through here now is going to be traffic that's dropping stuff off at those warehouses and our train cargo terminal. Moving on over now to the Spring Estate District, which is also at four stars at the moment. Now, if we have a quick look over here, we're just going to get rid of these things as well. And we're going to redo this entire area. I'm quite happy with the road layout of this place, so that's not going to change too much. But we do need to start thinking about reconfiguring our fields. And then what we can do is we can fill this out with some better uh, buildings we can put a few more generic industrial farm pieces in and we can hopefully expand this as much as possible so we're basically going to take this all the way back to tier one and hopefully it will continue to grow immediately back up to a tier four industrial area this is going to involve having us um add in like you know like run the simulation for a little bit just to get us built back up but what i'm also going to do is find any sort of agricultural unique buildings that we've got and if we just open up our industrial tab here and then go to our unique factories we will find we have a furniture factory in place we don't have the bakery we don't have a seafood factory our printing press is there we don't actually have any of the other buildings put down it's only this one the furniture factory so our bakery requires flour animal products and that will produce some unique things so we can actually put the bakery right in the middle of our estate district here and they will just churn out stuff for us and it'll be really useful and help our city to maintain a really nice level of stuff for the bakery we also have a lemonade factory now our lemonade factory at present is going to require additional import stuff i think we need glass so we don't have glass yet i think that is produced from maybe the ore industry and uh, yeah we are going to need that so we put the lemonade factory in it is huge now uh, i don't know where we're actually going to place this it kind of needs to go i would like to keep it within here because our ore industry is going to crop up over here when we finally get that producing stuff so we can maybe just put it there if we get rid of those roads i'll get rid of them and then we will build our lemonade factory and once it's in at least i know it's within the district where it should be and hopefully we can switch it off we can we can actually switch it off so it won't get crops or glass delivered to it which means it won't produce lemonade now i do think there might be another farming based one that we can put in place but we haven't yet unlocked it 
I might be wrong about that, but anyway, now what we're going to do is we're going to start working on our brand new plantations. So with our farming, obviously, we always need to put in our farm main building, and we're going to put that right next to the bakery. That will then kick off Spring Estate as a one-star industrial district. Next, we want to put in a small tree plantation. No, it's a medium fruit field we need to put in. So we put in this medium fruit field right here. Then we're going to need a large fruit field and we need to put three of these in. Now we don't have that yet unlocked. We need a level five farming area for that. So what I'll do for now is I'll put in a load more medium fruit fields and then a couple of small fruit fields to fill in the gaps. And this will probably mean that we're going to end up exporting quite a bit because we have more than we actually need. We then need some small animal pastures. So we're going to put in one of these for now, but we'll also need a large animal pasture eventually. So what I'll do is I'll just fill this out with some more smaller ones. Now, if we have a look, the large animal pasture has a production rate of 5,600 units. The small one only has 2,400. So to actually have this topped out, given that we need two large ones, we're actually going to need what, what, three, five of these extra ones here. Now, if I just go back over to my large fruit fields or our medium fruit fields, they will be producing, let's have a quick look, 8,000 units per week, and the large ones are 11,200. We currently need one medium fruit field and three large ones, which means we need to be producing around about 33,600 units of fruit per week. But that is to facilitate the production in both our bakery and our lemonade factory now bear in mind that these fields uh, medium fruit and medium like general crop field they will only produce crops regardless so we can actually mix and match and if we did have our large crop field which we don't we'd be able to use those instead and for aesthetic purposes i probably will use a mixture of both but for the time being let's just uh, remove these again and we'll try and add up to what we need for our fruit and crop fields and stuff so we can put a farm maintenance building in, which will increase the storage capacity of buildings. We'll put that in there, and then we can have some general um, additional buildings here, the domiciles, the farm workers' barracks, which increase the work efficiency by 5%, up to a maximum of 100%. So we need to have 20 of these in. So we've got, what, there's three there, four, five, six, seven... 20. That should now, if we click on this, have us producing the maximum amount we can actually pull out. Next, we actually need to put in two flour mills. And once that's done, this building and this uh, industrial district should start growing pretty nicely. Now, we do have the cattle shed and the milking parlor as well, which we don't actually need to put in as far as I can see because we have animal products already produced from here. So these animal products will then be used in the wider production within our city. So if we have a look at like the bakery needs animal products, the clothing factory needs animal products, the car factory and the food factory all need animal products. So I guess we do actually need a slaughterhouse. If we have a quick look over here at our animal pastures no actually we don't they basically will produce animal products anyway so the slaughterhouse is a bit redundant by the looks of things if i have a quick look over here yeah that seems to be completely redundant which is a little bit strange i didn't think that would be the case anyway we're going to get our flour mills in we can get one right there and another one somewhere else there uh, like down here there we go right okay so now that Farming district should be up and running, if I've done my calculations correct. Doesn't look like we need a slaughterhouse. We can use these grain silos, but my hope is that these just continue to produce stuff and will eventually top on over. So we don't have enough raw materials here, but that's because these pastures aren't completely up and running yet. They're still producing their base level of crops. So we're going to let that run for a little bit. We do have a little bit of an issue where we've got a lot of demand for residential zones, and that is becoming a little bit of an issue. I'm going to turn off our lemonade factory for now because it doesn't have the resources it needs from our other districts. 
You can also see due to a lack of population, the job market is starting to crash a little bit in here. And I think that's more to do with the fact that I'm running short on, uh, well, we've got a lot of commercial. We've got a lot of stuff here. So what I might do is this tech industry that we've got springing up here, we're actually going to dezone all of it here. So we're going to get rid of all of this tech industry that we've put in here, including that commercial district. And then we're going to fill this out with medium residential. Well, high density residential, I should say. And we're just going to grab a swatch here and we're just going to go all the way across. And that should now start to fill in with brand new residential areas. There's a couple of issues here where this is still zoned and that's zoned. So we'll, again, high density residential. Uh, they aren't zoned anymore because we've got extra buildings in there. But now everything should just rezone and we'll get more residents coming in, which actually might see us hit our new milestone, but it's certainly going to bring in a little bit more population. So all of these buildings should start to produce things. We've currently got, oh God, let's have a quick look. We aren't, we, we've not actually ticked over to the next time period yet. So I just want to wait a second and Hopefully this will all start to come together very quickly and we can move on to redeveloping our forestry. Now, our forestry, I was talking about tree saplings and stuff earlier. It's because I was reading the wrong part of the uh, little guide that I found here. But you can see here our own production has already jumped up pretty largely. And we are now starting to produce our own materials and stuff here. So once we've produced 500 units of resource, we'll already get up to our two-star spring estate district here. Moving on over to our forestry district now, you can see here we had a fair few issues. So what I want to do is I want to first things first demolish. Is that our furniture plant? It, it is not. It's the forestry maintenance building. And that's the forestry workers. Barracks, forestry main building, uh, biomass. Where is it? This medium warehouse, we're actually going to move on over again beyond the wall. <laughs> And again, that means they'll have to pay to get into that district. We have a lack of power here somehow. Oh, that's just skirting it. Right, we'll pull this over and then we should get power put into that area. Excellent. And yeah, right. Where's the furniture factory? That's the furniture factory. So we'll just temporarily move the furniture factory over here. Right next to that um, disaster response unit. That means I can then just come in here and redevelop this. We've got a firehouse here, but we're going to demolish and, and just redo this area. There's been a lot of traffic kind of forming here, which is a little bit of an issue. So getting rid of everything in here is hopefully going to give us a little bit more of an impetus to develop it well. Uh, I haven't really been a fan of this forestry district since we first put it in. So this is going to be a really nice thing to, to just redevelop. So we do have the main road that goes along and then we've got like an auxiliary road here that connects back up with the highway. So we do need to maybe do a little bit of jiggery pokery to uh, get this all working a little bit better for us. So that's why we're just removing everything and we're going to start from scratch. So we'll drop ourselves back down to a one star industry, which will probably impact our finances a little bit. But we are pretty flush for cash right now, in case you've noticed, <laughs> uh, in case you've not noticed. And uh, yeah, it's, it's looking really good. So we're getting rid of everything here. We'll even get rid of the little fire watch towers here so we can sort all of those out anew. Now here is where we have some of our major industries, uh, major issues coming off this track here. Although I wish I hadn't done that. So let's undo this. We we'll put that little road back in and then we'll get rid of this one. And then what we're going to need to do, in fact, no, we're going to put these ones back in as well because we've got a bus line that runs along here. No, you know what? We'll get rid of them as well. We'll just redo the bus line if needs be, and then uh, we can sort that out. So we'll get rid of... The... We'll leave this little residual road in because that actually links up quite nicely with the main highway. And then I'm just going to copy this long road here. and We'll pop that in so it loops round and then comes up into our district here. And then it will loop all the way through and potentially join up with the road there which means traffic is less likely to go and snarl up over in that area so again we'll just uh have this come right down to there where it matches up and should then join onto that highway or what we could even do is we'll get rid of this 
for a moment. And then we'll have this just kind of feed into here. And this will just match up there. Again, I'm not sure that's going to be such a good idea, so... I mean, we could get rid of this altogether, but it would involve moving that train station, the subway, so... Let's just have this road here. Loop. We just basically, we need a better intersection here. So we'll, we'll see if we can just bring it up to that area there, and then it's got a little bit less of an intersection, but there's still a fair, that's not a great snarl up to have. But never mind, we've done what we can. Now, back over to the Cyprus region, we just want to make sure that we have a better grasp on where this one is. So you can see it comes all the way down here, and that's because I had the intention to expand the forestry area there all the way down, but I'm not going to do that now. We're going to have our Cyprus region here just move a little bit further up into the mountains where our majority of tree line is. So it's going to come all the way up here. There we go. It's way bigger than it should be, so it's fine. We basically want to focus everything in this little area here. And what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to once again put in our forestry main building. We'll put it on this road here. In fact, what we can do is we can have some little roads coming off in our forestry uh, area here. So we'll put a two-lane road with trees in here that kind of sticks in a little bit but doesn't then interfere with the actual main auxiliary road that comes along here. Then we'll put in our forestry main building right on the edge here. There we go. Right, that's gone in. Excellent. Right, so now we can start putting in our tree plantations. And what we need is a small tree plantation to begin with. And then because we now have these all unlocked, we can put in a large tree sapling field. And they will go along here as well. Now we've got a bit of an issue with the slope being too steep there. And I think that might need to just be adjusted and brought down. Yeah, you can see right there it does have quite a slope to it. So let's go back into our tool here and we'll try and just grab our nodes. Uh, I think it's node controller renewal. No, it's this one. And then we'll set slope mode all the way along to here. And hopefully this will allow us to flatten everything. Basically what it's now doing is it's going to cut into the hillside here and leave us with a, a little bit more of a smooth road, which will then allow us to put in our new... Although this has now gone very weird. So we're going to delete these. <laughs> and hopefully now, this will all snap down. So if we get our... It was a large tree plantation, and we can put it here. No, this tree sapling field does not adjust. So I guess we need to come in with our smooth tool. So let's grab that and... Soften the terrain, we'll make it a fairly sizable brush, and uh, hopefully this will now... Yes, there we go, that's what we want. We'll make the brush size a little bigger as well. Oh, that's way too big. Uh, we'll bring it down to around about 80. There we go, now we can smooth all of this terrain down, and hopefully that'll give us a little bit of a better footing for our new road. Now, actually, if we just grab the level tool here, we can level this all out quite nicely. And when we put in our plantation now, it should look a lot better. You can see there's a little bit of pollution here that we're going to need to work out, but I don't think it'll be a problem. I think once we've got the trees and stuff planted, I think it's all going to look a little bit better. Uh, yeah, that's looking fairly good. Now then, we'll go back into our industry and finally we'll put down these sapling plantations. One there. One there. One there. Now we need three of those. Oh, it's only the two that we need, actually, so we can get rid of one of them. Then, what we've got to add in is a engineered wood plant. So, if we go over to our engineered wood plant, which is an upgraded version of the sawmill, which is why we don't actually need to put in any sawmills. So, we put two engineered wood plants in here, and then three pulp mills, which are here. Now, these guys are the ones that cause a fair bit of pollution. So we'd kind of like to keep these a little bit further away from things, but I'm going to put one 
Um, where can we fit one? Put one here. One here. And one across the road. I'm anticipating that to cause a fair bit of traffic, though, so we are going to need to be aware of that one. Now, our unique buildings that deal with our forestry industry, if we have a look at our factories here, our printing press, but that does seem to need extra bits and pieces there as well. I believe it's something to do with oil. Now, what I'd like to do is try and keep all of my oil industry over here, because if we just go to our raw resources... And, oh no, that's a different one. So I do have a mod now that lets me place raw resources, but I'm not actually going to be doing that. I want to make sure that I've got everything right. But you can see right here, there's a nice bit of oil there that we can tap into for our new oil industry. And over there, as I mentioned before, is ore. So uh, our oil industry, I'd quite like to keep around here, especially when we consider that we may need to import some stuff as well. So we will put our printing press over here. And again, we'll probably be switching that off. In fact, I will put it this side as well, so it's quite close to the furniture factory. Now, our furniture factory requires paper and plain timber. So we're going to move that back into this industrial area just to try and remove a little bit of the industrial traffic that cuts through here. Then we go back to our unique buildings and we have a quick look here. We have a clothing factory which requires animal products and plastic goods which again come from oil but our clothing factory here is is going to still go down we're going to put it in this in we'll put it here and again that will require some plastic products so we're going to turn it off and then over at our printing press we'll turn that off as well so my hope is that we get some sort of oil industry up and running at some point and then we can start tapping into that. And then over here we have our soft paper factory, which again requires crops, paper and petroleum. So again, we're going to put that right here. And again, you can see we're starting to form up a brand new industrial processing district right here. Which means, I mean, we could move all of this onto this one side here. I think that might be a better idea because it keeps it away from this residential district. But what I'd like to do is try and put like a little office buffer in that runs along here and along here. Just to isolate the residents that are living within this new district here. This is all going to have to be moved at some point as well. And basically what I'd quite like to do is try and move all of my heavy polluting industry into one area. And the actual place that I've earmarked for it is the other side of this road here. Which is a shame because I was looking to do some tourism and things here, but what we might do is create a brand new tourism industry somewhere else. This is probably going to be the centre of my new tourism, which means we could actually move the heavy industry over to this area here. And it kind of creates a nice filtration system where everything from the farming industry here will then feed into it and everything from all of the extra industry here will feed into that. And again, the ore industry will be able to get there as well. So that actually seems like the best place to put all of these heavy processing stuff. But for now, we will leave it as it is. I think I've got one more that I can put in here and it's the modular house factory, which requires everything. So it basically makes use of everything from these industrial areas. So we'll put that in as well and then we'll turn it off. At least we know that it is in place. You can see there plain timber, plastics, glass and metals, which are from everything but the farming industries. But we have neglected a few things in Cypress timber processing, and that is actually putting in the workers barracks and the maintenance buildings. These keep things running nice and efficient. So I haven't actually put in any log yards or storage yet because I don't know if anything is actually going to be stored. I think everything may go straight into actually production, like producing stuff. So our forestry workers barracks, these are big and it takes quite a while to fit all of these in. So we've got one. We still need to get 20 in as well, I think. And again, the slope is too steep. So we can put at least two in there. And three. And these cost a lot of money. Four, five, six, <laughs> seven, eight, <laughs> nine. We'll leave it at ten for now because actually we can get eleven. And again, we're too steep here. So we got eleven. 
And I think 11 will be the most we can fit in for now until we do a little bit more development in here. But we can also put in, I think there's a forestry maintenance building, which we will fit in somewhere, hopefully. There we go. Right, so that goes in, and then we just have to wait a little bit for everything to start developing. Hopefully our lines will jump across. Just going to wait for that to happen, but we do have a lack of power here, so we're going to need to hook things up right there. Ah! Ah! Problem is, we've lost some power lines connecting to our actual main city. That's why we've had an issue there. Right, okay, so that should hopefully hook everything back up. And we do need to add in a little bit of water to this area here. There we go, right then. So now, we just have to wait for our industries to come back to life. We're going to act very quickly, though, and demolish this tech industry here. So if we get to Willow Park and we just go to our zoning and remove the district here, that is now going to be gone. And we will destroy everything in here. I think that was never really going to work long term for us because we, we simply don't have the uh, educated workers for it either. So that was a taxi rank that we're getting rid of. And then these final few things. We've got a metro station there that we can get rid of. So let's just pause because I'm going to have to do a little bit of rerouting there as well. Power. Uh, we've lost power to this part of the city. So we'll just need to hook that back up. It's like by the smallest of margins as well. We can go across here. There we go. I think that should hook it all back up. Oh, apparently not. The issue is here. If we get rid of them and then run this power line all the way up to you. Yeah. That should restore power to the whole city. Yeah, that's the problem when you're running around trying to do all of this. There we go. Right, that solves that. Then we can get to our underground lines for our rail network. The metro system. And we will just add in an extra bit of track. Let's go underground. There we go. We've removed the stops, but everything continues to work as normal. We'll end up redeveloping that soon enough. But it's looking like we've got a fair few abandoned buildings. There's a little bit more demand for commercial and our population is starting to decline somewhat. Which will bring us on to our next episode when we develop the new commercial district. Spring Estate has produced quite a lot of resources here. The efficiency is currently at 108%, which is really good. That means we're going to produce a lot of resources. Over in Cypress Timber Processing, however, our efficiency is uh, not quite as uh, high. But we are starting to improve that. Once we've got more raw forestry production in, we'll stop uh, importing, which will hopefully see us top out with a nice amount of uh one of the problems is i think the pulp mills are working overdrive by importing stuff so we're going to get rid of that that will hopefully stem the losses of uh stuff here but i can still see some issues so i'm probably going to need to work that one out off camera we'll try and uh stop the flow of cash going so poorly uh and uh rebuild our industry so next episode when i come back i'm hoping to have all of this sorted out you can see as well aspen college has taken a massive hit as well but it is starting to build back up again and at the end of this academic year it'll be uh restored to its previous reputation and uh yeah over here everything is just gonna hopefully start to fix itself we do have some crime issues and stuff and these lines do need fixing so i will be doing that and uh yeah other than that we are looking pretty good But yeah, that's, that will do us for now. I think it's uh, looking pretty good, apart from obviously we've got a lot of abandoned buildings here, but that will eventually sort itself out. Once these uh, areas upgrade appropriately, we should find ourselves in a much better position. I just have a quick look again over at our 
timber processing. You can see here our output has increased quite massively. Our imports have gone down quite a bit as well. And we just need to continue producing resources to get everything sorted. Uh, yeah, it's all looking pretty good. The Barlow region, uh, where is that now, actually? That, that is here. It needs to be deleted. So we're going to remove the industrial zone from that region there. We no longer actually need it. So once this is done and we've got these built back up, we'll be able to uh, continue processing things at a nice rate and then we can maybe focus on our ore district and our oil. Now, to do those though, we actually need to um, increase our population because we need to unlock a new plot and we're not going to be able to do that until we hit a population of 37,000. So once all of these abandoned buildings have kind of cleared up and we've... Uh, Resatisfied the demand for industry and officers, which uh, will happen because these officers here are all now abandoned and we should get those sorted very soon. So what I'll do is I'll just demolish a bunch of these so we get new builds coming in and hopefully that will help our population to recover. I'm aware that I'm actually demolishing <laughs> pre-existing office buildings, but we need to get rid of this to restore the uh, value of the area. You can see now we are already getting new builds moving in and this is actually a very happy result here because as soon as this is solved, we will start to get new residential areas cropping up as well. What we can actually do is we can potentially rezone some more residential and uh, just continue to expand the population in that way. And that will mean more people using schools, feeding into our industry and feeding into our university sector. So we will leave it there. It's night time again. So uh, I, uh, I really hope that you've enjoyed this episode of City Skylines. We've made some big progress, big progress in the actual look of the city. It's starting to look really nice and uh, a lot more realistic in my opinion. Uh, apart from that lorry that has just done the most insane clipping through another lorry. But you can see here we're going to start making a nice bit of money very soon. I think this has been a necessary redevelopment and it puts our industry in a much better footing moving forward. So um, yeah, I hope this has been a good episode despite it being quite a bitty one. Next time we'll be redeveloping our commercial centre which will hopefully see us move some of our offices and industry areas out further afield as well as giving us a chance to boost our population further and unlock our next set of plots i'll probably go with the ore area first and then we will continue to develop further so thanks for watching guys and i will see you next time bye bye